His mother was a jackal. I'm going to be base coating the model with this dark purple. Let's give it a quick test spray on my hand. And then, yeah, I'm just going to be covering the model with this dark purple. I'm going to be spraying uh, the corn red over the top as a zenithal, and this will blend nicely with the purple, so it'll leave the purple in the darker recesses and create um, nice shadows for it. And also this, um, the corn red will be a nice base colour for the skin tones. Now these are the colours I'll be using for a skin tone. I'm just going to be using my 00 Winsor Newton Series 7 brush. Yeah, just starting off with the Bugman's Glow, just try and follow the shapes of the muscles and leave all uh, the darker areas in the recesses. It might look a bit strange to start with, but I'm going to show you how to join them all up and make it not look how it looks right now. But yeah, just keep going to get the opacity that you want. And if you can see, what I'm trying to do is join the muscle groups up now to sort of get rid of the, um, the sort of the really thick, dark shadows. I mean, up close, it doesn't look that cool, but from far away, the way the dark shadows are, it actually looks really good. But yeah, when you actually, if you pick the model up and look at it, how dark the shadows are around the muscle groups just doesn't, look very natural so yeah just try and try and join them up but at the same time still leave in enough like depth in the shadows for the muscles to be defined But yeah, this is quite a hard step because it's easy just to cover up all of the shadows and you have to put it all back in again and it's, it becomes a bit too much back and forth. So the carefully you are at this stage, um, the easier it is as the stages go on. But yeah, just doing a bit, bit of a, my uh, punk punch technique where I'm sort of stippling and tapping the brush. Kind of looks dry brush motion, but I am using the wet paint, as you can see. Okay, I went ahead and just did the rest of the skin. You can see he's still left enough of the shadows and he's got a nice base of the Bugman's Glow. I'm just gonna move up to the Cadian Flesh Tone now. Um, I'll be covering less of the surface. Again, doing the old punk punch. Looks sort of like a dry brush, but using wet paint. It's a nice way to get texture and build up the layers slowly. And yeah, just overall get a more realistic looking, looking skin. So yeah, try not to cover up completely the previous colour, just add in a nice skin tone to it. And yeah, also just going over the areas where I've joined the muscle groups. And yeah, just trying to get it, get it looking cool. But yeah, I don't know what the actual 
if there is a real artist technique, I'm just calling it punk punch because it's uh, quite funny. And yeah, just basically keep working up the opacity until you get, get the colours to where it looks cool. But yeah, lots of gentle tapping, stippling, adding texture. I'm just giving it a look over, make sure I'm happy. See if I need to add any more or whether it's okay to move on to the next stage. I'm just going to add a little bit more to his head. Just get it, get the skin tone to pop a bit more. And yeah, just define his face a bit. Again, just working in very thin layers, building it up and trying not to cover up the previous layers. Moving up to the final highlight now. I'm just being very, very careful not to overdo this one. The skin tone's in a nice place, we're just adding a little bit of extra pop to it. And just, yeah, help define the muscles. Again, yeah, just going over some of the shadows, just making sure that the muscle groups uh, are connected and just not all separated. Just for me, it looks a bit more realistic and it also, when you look at the model up close, it looks a lot nicer. But yeah, there's enough shadow there, so from a distance it still, still looks defined and cool. Yeah, just bringing out the details with the with the higher tone. I'm just giving them a look around, see if I need to add any extra, making sure I'm happy. Okay, so I'm going to be making a glaze out of this corn red. So I've just popped a bit onto my wet palette, added moisture to it, just so you can see the consistency there. And yeah, it's always good to test it on your nail first, just to make sure that the, the paint is reacting how you want it to. I'm just taking a bit of the excess moisture off on the paper towel, but yeah, this is what it should look like. And I'm going to be painting this into the recesses of the muscle groups and just adding this filter over it just to make it look a bit more realistic, a bit of blood flow and yeah, just to think it looks, just to make it look a cooler to, to me. So as you can see, it's brought the skin tones together nicely and yeah, it's looking really cool. And just wait for this to dry, just to double check and see if I want to make any more modifications to it. So yeah, now it's dried. I'm just going to add a bit more of the skin tone back in and join, rejoin some of the muscle groups. Just where the um, where I put the glaze, I sort of undid a little bit of the work in the shadows, but where I've joined the muscle groups. So, yeah, just going back over and popping it all back in.
And yeah, it's nice adding lots of different texture to the skin. Definitely makes it look a lot more realistic. Don't want flat boring skin tones. And yeah, it's nice to have texture on them. They're gonna be scarred, they've out in battle. So yeah, just to add into the drama of the piece. It's redefining some of his facial features. And yeah, just really trying to make the skin pop. I mean, the skin is the bulk of these models, so yeah, you want to take the most, the most time on this and make sure it's really good. So yeah, just double checking to make sure I'm happy. Adding a couple of extra little bits here and there. Nice, I'll just give you a look at it from a bit more of a realistic perspective, just a bit farther away, so you can see the muscles are still nice and defined, but they're not just blocks, just, yeah, un undetached blocks of muscle. So yeah, I'm going to be doing all of the, the black parts with this black, just as boots and straps. Yeah, just go slowly and take care not to ruin all your hard work you've already done. Just going to be adding this lighter black, sort of really dark grey, just to highlight, highlight some of the straps in his boots. Yeah, again, just take your time. There's no rush. Cool, I'm just going to be going over all of the silver parts of the lead belcher. There's chainsaws. I believe he's got some chains and stuff on his back. Right, I'm going to be using these colours just to do his trousers. I know on the box art that their trousers are black, or well, their clothing is black. Um, but I don't know, I just feel like seeing as these are going to be with corn and part of, I don't know, going out with the berserkers and mainly red armour, I thought it would be nice to make them look a bit more obvious that they're with corn. So yeah, again, just punk punching the uh, the wet paint. It's doing the fast colour, and yeah, adding lots of texture. It's a really nice way to add texture to material, and yeah, get it looking more realistic. And again, being careful to leave the shadows. I quite like the purple in the in the deepest recesses against the red. And yeah, just moving up. Just slowly doing the layers, getting brighter and brighter. Oh, the final highlight. And then I'm just going to be going over it with the new oil just to bring it all together. It is really nice to use over red. It goes nice with the purple shadows and yeah, brings the, the red textures together. And just while I'm at it, I'm going to go over all, uh, all the silver pieces. Oh, 
we'll be doing is goldy brass bits. So I thought it would look cool. Uh, doing the knee pads and the face mask. I'm going to be doing the spikes and the sort of the trim on his backpack. But yeah, I was really happy because I wasn't 100% on how these colours would go together, but yeah, I'm actually like really pleased with how it's going so far. doing all the, the bone elements. Oh yeah, and just be going over the pistol with it, just adding a bit of texture to it. So I'll be putting a wash over that later. You know, just adding this wash to the skulls, add the depth back in, make them look a bit more realistic, and then I'll also be doing this with the pistol case. Very nice contrast paints. I say it's a great way to add texture to something and then pull it, pull the colours colours together. I was going over all the silver bits, just bring a bit of pop back in, more texture, get some scratches. And yeah, just brighten it back up after adding the, the shade to it. Going over all uh, bronzy bits with the Agrax half shade. Again, just to bring some depth back into it. And then going over all of the brass bits. And again, just trying to hit the most raised up bits. And just yeah, adding some more depth back in and getting the brassy bits to pop. Yeah, it's giving it a good look over. And yeah, I'll just be adding this back over to the bone bits, but I won't be doing the pistol. And then that will help differentiate the colours from the skulls and the pistol. Just be adding this blood effect to his chain swords and probably some of his the spikes on his head, just so he looks really violent. He's just been headbutting people with his spikes and killing them with his chain sword. But yeah, the blood for the blood god it is a really nice, good effect. And 
And yeah, definitely, definitely suits corn models. Yeah, just taking a, another look at him, make sure I'm happy. I'm going to give him, instead of having like pigmented eyes, like giving him blue eyes or something, I'm going to give him more of a sort of demon eye look. So the Rakar flesh, you can just paint that onto the actual, the ball of the eye. And then, yeah, using the carb of crimson to sort of deepen the recesses and make him look really demonic. But yeah, you could get away with not doing the eyes on them. Depends on your patience. Yeah, just moving on to the base, getting the um, some of the PVA glue on there. And then back to my box of basic material. Just gonna make a little well for him to sit in and then yeah, just push it on. Get the base covered. I do like using a brown base material, it's really inoffensive and neutral. Light. Subscribe.